Details on how you can win this tablet at the end of the video. Welcome to the unboxing review of the XP Pen Artist 12 graphics drawing tablet. So a while ago those lovely people over at XP Pen got in touch with me and asked, Mikey, would you like to review our new affordable graphics drawing screen tablet? And I of course said yes, certainly. And then I got very ill and things got delayed. However, this worked out quite well as it really made me appreciate what an entry level tablet can be capable of. But more on that later. So links in the description below if you're curious, but to start off this is what you can expect in the post. You've got a well padded box that floats the package within to avoid any knock damage and inside you can see the XP Pen provide the tablet in a display ready and cleanly designed box. And yes, I do actually care about packaging design. It's got an artist rendering of the logo details and also follows that XP Pen tradition with some of its models of having a rainbow trim to the inside of the box packaging. On the back you have the product specifications but as you know I always approach my reviews from the point of view of an artist and not not a technical specialist, so we can approach these details once we get the tablet out. After peeling off the plastic and opening the lid, you have the 11.6 inch drawing tablet itself in a separate plastic sleeve. And as you can see, the inside of the lid has a further padding layer. Underneath this is a card divider and then the rest of the gubbins in a neat vacuum formed tray. Inside a card sleeve you get the drawing smudge guard glove which is designed to stop any natural greases from your hand dirtying up the screen whilst keeping your thumb and forefingers free to hold the pen and this is always a small but essential piece of kit that you should expect to find included with any tablet screen. You get a small cleaning cloth for well, cleaning reasons, and a product thank you card for choosing their range. You're welcome. Then you get a warranty policy pamphlet and the actual product setup usage instructions, both of which I will of course never read. Down on the left side you do have a square USB power plug and then a selection of different plug types that you can slot on and switch over depending on what country you're in. In the second crosswise card box you get the micro HDMI adapter cable which is always convenient, the USB cable for use with the power plug and an all-in-one multi cable, something which is fairly common with newer drawing tablet screens which are also designed to be mobile for use on the go. Then on the right you have a solid cylinder which is kind of reminiscent of a delivery cylinder or a but is in fact a rather large hard shell for the digital stylus pen, which slots suggestively into the end and has a smaller checkbook pen feel about it, while the other end of the container houses for spare nibs. As for the tablet itself, it's got a pattern grained plastic rear with four rubber grips to avoid sliding on the desk, and it has a couple of different plastic grains that build up the design on the front. So really this is what you can expect out of the box. You have the drawing tablet screen itself, a smudge glove, cleaning cloth, thank you card, setup guide and warranty booklets, all-in-one connection leads, USB power cable, the power plugs with different clip-on ends depending on the region, the drawing pen and the hard shell case with the spare nibs. So to give you an idea of how a smaller more portable drawing tablet like this looks in terms of scale, this is what it looks like in a relatively small desk space like my own. If we peel off the screen protector and take a look at the surface, there is that separate plastic grain which runs up the left hand edge with six quick access keys and a touch sensitive slider in the middle. Now remember when it comes down to tablet buttons it's not about how they look but about how they feel as you're going to be navigating by touch whilst your eyes stay focused on the screen. So having a raised dot on the central of the three button groupings much like the F and J keys on your keyboard is a good design touch. The only other buttons on this tablet run along the thin left hand edge for the power and brightness controls but it doesn't appear to have any further menu settings. Now as you can see this thing is designed to sit flat on a surface and the rubber grips at the far corners stop it from shifting about when in use. But that does mean that the use of the quick access keys can feel a little bit awkward position wise for your non drawing hand. And despite being an affordable tablet screen this thing actually has a pretty thin profile as you can see sitting on the desk. It's great for then slipping into the same bag that might house your laptop or just chucking into your luggage if you need a tablet for travelling around with, but personally it means craning your neck just a little bit too far over your desk unless you find a way to tilt it at an angle. Now to get cracking you just want to slot the appropriate end onto the power plug and grab your multi cable. You either need to use the HDMI end of the lead as it is on the all in one multi cable and just plug it into your computer or use that micro HDMI adapter depending on what slots you have available. The red lead 
speed is for the power, so that connects to the USB power cable which in turn slots into the plug. And that leaves just the other USB end which also plugs into your computer for when you're actually working on the tablet, and not just using it as a smaller, simple second screen. And lastly, the smaller USB-C connection which plugs into the Artist 12 itself. Note however, if you plug it in so that the cable leads down, it actually blocks the power and brightness buttons, so you do need to connect it with the lead trailing up. Before installing any drivers, my Windows 10 computer recognized this tablet as a second screen instantly after turning it on for the first time. And in a side-by-side -side comparison to my regular main 27-inch monitor, it looks like that 72% of NTSC color gamut is okay, but in fact it's set with a rather high level of contrast, which you cannot adjust. The nearest best thing I found to do about it was to up the brightness all of the way and make sure that you check any artwork that you make on your second monitor from time to time just to make sure those color levels match your expectations. However, installing the drivers is as simple as downloading from the XP Pen website, and I found the interface to be clear and simple to use. For the way that I use things and understand smooth pen pressure, I usually find it's best to nudge up the pressure map ever so slightly, and this is also where you can assign the quick access hotkeys for whatever functions you most commonly use. And this is where you can also set the screen to rotate 180 degrees if you're somebody who wants to have the tablet the other way around for left-handed use. <laughs> I'm sorry there, I nearly threw up at the very thought. Now, as for XP Pen's P06 stylus, despite it being rather petite, I did have a pretty good feel for the resistance when pressed against the screen without any notable sponginess or travel in the nib which was great. It's battery free, which in some older models of tablet pens was personally a warning put off, but these days it seems that the technology really has improved and it came with 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity. It has buttons on the side with a slim hexagonal profile that should stop it rolling off the desk and help it align in your hand, as well as a eraser button on the back which was automatically programmed into Photoshop. But this does feel like an example of looks over touch. As because the buttons on the side run flush with the pen instead of sticking out, it can often roll in your hand whilst you're working, and you can lose track by touch alone of just exactly what side of the pen the buttons are on, meaning that you need to stop what you're doing for a split second to look at it when you're working. The other end of the cylinder container, as mentioned, does house those spare nibs, and also has a metal slot in the center which can be used to pinch the nibs for removing and inserting into the pen. But if you're not careful, the nibs can go right through that hole and wrap around inside the shell of the case. And it is also rather large compared to the pen, but I'm sure this is on purpose as it means that you can throw this into your luggage knowing that it's not going to get damaged at all or eventually get lost down the side of some furniture. So as ever, I wanted to actually sit down and use this tablet for a while in order to get an overall feeling and opinion instead of just the basic facts. And because my day-to-day -day tablets actually both died before I ended up receiving this one, I did actually use this a lot and my last Ash fan art piece was all completed on this tablet. So normally when it comes to a tablet model which is designed to be more affordable and more portable, I usually say that you want to aim for something closer to 15 inches in screen size to avoid feeling cramped. But if I've learnt anything recently, you really can get everything done on an 11 inch screen if you need to. Now, one of the first things is that although this tablet is lovely and slim, having it actually sit flat on your desk isn't that great, and in order to use the quick access keys comfortably, you really want to be able to wrap your hand around the side. So I grabbed a pack of printer paper to prop it up at the better angle, and also so that I didn't have to crane my neck right over the desk in order to get working. Now that screen actually has quite a comfortable wide viewing angle, but I'm not getting any younger, and even with my glasses on, I did find my head getting closer and closer to the screen as I concentrated, so you definitely want to tilt this at a little bit of an angle so that you can sit comfortably. The feeling of the pen to screen texture was fine, although there is still a bit of parallax that you do need to get used to, and as I worked I did every now and then still get the occasions where the pen pressure levels didn't register in Photoshop, and I got the occasional deep line when I wasn't expecting one. It worked fine in the far corners of the screen whilst accessing menu options, but you will be working mostly in the central area for your art. 
The quick access keys felt good to use, and although any tablet which comes with an actual slider is a godsend for zooming in and out of your artwork without having to take your pen hand back over to the scroll wheel on your mouse, it wasn't perfectly responsive to the touch compared to some more expensive models. Now, rolling the pen in my hand and losing the position of the buttons happened a lot, and although a minor inconvenience, it did often mean that I had to stop drawing for a split second to actually look at the pen to see where they were. It's something that can be resolved by maybe just popping a tiny piece of blue tack onto the button itself, but it did feel like an example of visual design coming before good ergonomics. So overall, what are my thoughts about this tablet? Well, they're actually quite positive. This tablet feels like it is trying to offer you as much as possible on a limited budget. You have a sharp 1080p screen, quick access keys with a slider bar, even if it's not the best, that's pretty good. And all for all, it's a good price compared to similar competition. Now, not being able to correctly balance the color and contrast levels on this tablet screen is a bit of a letdown for me. But if you're looking for an entry into the world of tablet screens where price is going to be a little bit more important than working on something a little bit larger in size, then this might be one of the best ways to go. So of course, a great big thank you to XP Pen for popping me the Artist 12 graphics drawing tablet over for review, plus a bonus thank you for it turning up just after my main tablets decided to both die. Now links of course again are in the description below, and if you found this review to be of any use, please consider subscribing for more stuff in the future, or just get yourself into the comments section below if you have any thoughts and questions on this bit of kit. And as mentioned right at the start of this video, if you would like to be in with a chance of winning this tablet, because I will post it worldwide, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram, like my last post, and tell me what character you might want to see me draw in the future. I'll be picking the winner at the end of the month and announcing in the first video of the new year. But in the meantime, keep an eye out for any further tablet reviews, and of course, I'll see you next time. Take care.